This lecture is on downstream processing, focusing on centrifugation and filtration, which are important procedures in biomanufacturing. Downstream processing are procedures used immediately after cultivation of cells is complete. This can include, but is not limited to, centrifugation, homogenization, filtration, and chromatography. Separate teams perform these steps once the upstream process is finished. Each step is called a unit operation. Material that feeds into downstream processing varies. It could be biomass in the form of cells, single cell protein, yeast, or probiotics. Material can also come from inside the cell, such as recombinant proteins, cell organelles such as the nucleus, DNA, and lipids such as fuels. Extracellular products could include secreted proteins, antibiotics, other chemicals such as acids, alcohols, polysaccharides, and amino acids. Usually the first step is to remove the cells from the media they were grown in. This will be done no matter if the product is in the broth or inside the cells. Cell separation is usually processing using a centrifuge but other techniques such as flocculation in the case of beer fermentation and yeast are used. For biopharmaceuticals, filtration may be used as single-use systems are desirable. The rate of selling is determined by calculating the force applied to the particle, so the external forces minus the drag and minus the buoyancy will be equal to the mass times the change in velocity. The acceleration factor part of the Fe term changes depending on whether the force applied is from sedimentation, i.e. gravity, or centrifugation, i.e. velocity of the centrifuge. Sedimentation can be used for larger cells like yeast in the brewing process. For this to work, agitation is stopped in the fermentation system and cells sediment. Liquid can then be pumped off the top, leaving the cells in place. Sedimentation is advantageous because of cost and the fact that no specialized equipment is needed. It can be slow, and some solids may be difficult to remove, though. Flocculation is the same as sedimentation, except a chemical is added to promote sedimentation. It is typically not used in research scale, and only used in large-scale processes such as the NutraSweet process. This process was run at a plant in Augusta, Georgia for many years at greater than 600,000 liter scale. Centrifugation is a mechanical process first developed in the 1870s consisting of acceleration of material in a system. There are a number of configurations including swinging baskets, tubular bowls, which we will discuss later, disc stack, and others. Centrifugal force is based on the rotational speed according to the formula on the right. Large radii equal more force. Centrifuges are grouped into two main types. Regular centrifuges, also called floor centrifuges, have a max rotational speed of about 30,000 RPM or less, while ultra centrifuges or 30,000 or more, sometimes over 100,000 RPMs. In addition, there are two main types of rotors that go into these centrifuges. Fixed angle rotors, where the tubes are put in at an angle of around 45 degrees relative to the floor, and swing bucket, which, as its name suggests, swing out during rotation. Most importantly, safety is a big concern, with centrifuges being responsible for many lab accidents, so always remember to balance tubes prior to running a centrifuge. The rate of sedimentation is based on a number of factors as shown in the formula here. These include the size of the particle and density, the velocity of the centrifuge, and radius of the sample from center. Also, the viscosity and shape of the particles plays a factor. Continuous centrifuges rely on transit of material across the centrifuge rotor surface, so this should be accounted for when determining sedimentation rates, as shown in the formula on the right. Most research labs will run batch centrifugation where material is placed in a bottle, then spun and material removed. In semi-continuous units, the flow is continuous, but product can build up, so the process needs to be stopped 
to remove product and reset the system as in tubular bowl centrifuges. In this example of a tubular bowl centrifuge, material moves through the system and cells or other material coats inside the bowl shown as the white area in the figure. The photo on the right shows the system in operation. Multi-chamber systems such as the distack system shown here utilize plates to increase centrifugal force when separating materials. A comparison of systems shows that these tubular bowls offer good dewatering and are easy to clean as well as getting high dry cell concentration. Chamber bowl centrifuges can hold a large amount of material but unit operations can be difficult because the systems are difficult to clean. In practice, tubular bowls utilize plastic films that get coated with cells and can be easily removed and replaced with new films. In disk stack systems, cells collect and then are ejected on a time basis or removed continually through an overflow mechanisms or, or similar. These systems, unlike tubular bowl systems, don't have to be stopped to remove cells. Scroll centrifuges are a type of filtering centrifuge which separates solids and liquids from a solid-liquid mixture. This type of centrifuge is commonly used with a continuous process in which slurry containing both solid and liquid is continuously fed into and continuously discharged from the centrifuge. The basic principle is the entering feed is separated into liquids and solids. The feed is transported from small to larger diameter end of the conical basket by the inclination of the screen basket and slightly different speed of the scraper worm. The solid material retained on the screen is moved along the cone via an internal screw conveyor while the liquid output is obtained due to centrifugal force causing the feed slurry to pass through the screen openings. Furthermore, screen scroll centrifuges may rotate either in horizontal or vertical positions. Distack centrifuges can be used continuously as there is a discharge option in some systems. There is also low shear force, but some samples come out with lower dry solids content and are difficult to clean. Scroll centrifuges can handle large amounts of solids, but have low centrifugal force capabilities. Switching gears now, filtration is the use of membranes to separate materials based on their size. The process can be aided by gravity, pressure, vacuum, or shear forces. There are many formats for filtration and materials that make up the membranes. Filtration requires less energy and capital input than centrifugation for similar unit operations. It is more versatile, meaning a wide range of molecular weight biomolecules can be processed, and it is also well suited for single-use technology. The disadvantage includes that it is difficult to clean and the consumables can be relatively expensive. Unlike centrifugation, the resulting material from filtration may have lower dry solids content, i.e. more water. Denim filtration is commonly used in labs and essentially where material is pushed directly through a membrane with a particular size cutoff. This is analogous to brewing coffee where a material is passed through a membrane with some material being retained and some going through based on size relative to the pores in the membrane. Dead-end membranes can easily become clogged and plugging can be prevented by increasing the size of the membrane or removing solids as is done with vibrating screens and rotating drums. This is an example of a rotating drum filter. Tangential flow filtration, as its name suggests, is where liquid does not move directly through a membrane, but material is forced out via pressure and flow, which results in less buildup on the membrane itself. The system is used to both concentrate cells and proteins. Concentration of cells is called microfiltration, while concentration of proteins and other small biomolecules is ultrafiltration. Tangential flow filtration can also be used for buffer exchange. In this situation, it is called diafiltration. The system is comprised of a sample feed which sends liquid into the membrane. The sample that is retained inside the membrane is called the retentate. The sample is retained because it is larger than the pore size of the membrane. Sample that passes through the membrane is called the filtrate. The rate of liquid transit is called flux and is determined experimentally 
and expressed as volume per minute per area of the membrane. Flux can increase with pressure and decrease with viscosity. Pressure can be increased by increasing the flow rate in the system. Flow rates can be calculated using the following formula and are affected by the resistance of the membrane and any resistance by buildup on the membrane and liquid viscosity, as mentioned before. TFF can be developed at small scale and scaled up easily. The membrane area required for scaled up unit operations is a factor of the volume of the material filtered, the flux rate, and time required for the process. Shown here are some examples of TFF systems. On the left is a hollow fiber system which consists of tubular membranes packed into a housing. Plate and frame systems, shown on the right, are membranes folded into a rectangular cartridge with channels for sample, filtrate, and retentate. Both can be expanded by increasing the number of hollow fiber systems in tandem or by increasing the number of cartridges stacked as is the case of the plate and frame systems. In conclusion, centrifugation and filtration are common ways to process cells, each with a variety of ways to implement the unit operations. In later videos, we'll focus on another unit operation in downstream processing, chromatography.